God bless you, people of God. It's good to have you with us today as we'll be having a message on God Day. And I think it's a message that should be music in the ears of the people of God, as the Lord is going to minister to us today. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you and we bless your name. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise, we give you, Lord, all the adoration. We thank you, Lord, for the preciousness of your word. We thank you, Lord God in heaven, that your word is life, is light, is power. Your word has authority. Your word, God Almighty, strengthens us, consolidates us. Heavenly Father, Lord, solidifies us in the things of the Lord. And we pray, Lord God in heaven, that as we go through your word again today, your word will accomplish your purposes for the life of each and every one of Lord who is watching right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name holy name we pray. Amen. The message today is titled, The Message Satan Has Stolen from the Church. The Message That Satan Has Stolen from the Church. And it's a message about the second coming of the Lord. Now that's why I said at the very beginning that the second coming of the Lord should be music in the ears of the church. A day is coming when the King of Kings, when the Lord of Lords, when the El Shaddai, when the Creator of the heavens and earth, when Jesus Christ of Nazareth, when the lover of our soul, when the one who is the resurrection and the life, when the Son of the living God, when the head of the church is going to come back He's going to bust the eastern skies. The trumpet is going to sound and he's come, going to come and take his people home. What a wonderful day. What a glorious day. What a great day. What a day that the church should be anticipating and looking forward to and be expectant that the Lord God in heaven, our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who died on the cross, the one who paid the price, the one who went through excruciating pain, the one who loves our soul, the one who shed his blood at Calvary, at Golgotha, that you and I may be saved. The one who said that we are his bride and he is the bridegroom, the lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world, the one who is the Lord of hosts, the one who is the bread of life, the one who is the captain of our safe salvation, the one who is the express image of God. One day he's going to come again. The one that we read about in the Bible, we read about in Matthew, in Mark, in Luke, in John, the one that is spoken about in the epistles, in the book of Romans, and the book of Corinthians, and the book of Galatians, and the book of Ephesians, and the book of Colossians, and the book of First and Second Thessalonians, and the book of Philippians, and the book of First and Second Timothy, and Titus, and all the books. The one that John the Beloved speaks about in the book of Revelation. A day is coming, glorious day, wonderful day, great day that the Lord is going to come again. And because this is such an important message for the people of God, Satan seems to have found his way by taking away this message from the church. Many don't talk about it as they should. Many don't preach about it as they should. Many emphasize upon many other things but the second coming of the Lord. Let me give you some statements of fact here. When you are to categorize, when you are to categorize the subject matters that the early church, the apostles and the writers of the epistles, if you are to categorize the subject matter of the things they spoke about, Number one on the list was the second coming of the Lord. Paul's writing, number one on the list, the second coming of the Lord. Peter's writing, go and check up. James' writing, go and check up. John's writing, go and check up. The, the emphasis, the number one subject matter that they underscored in their epistles was the second coming of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And it's really wrong. 
that we have allowed the devil to take away this message from the church. In fact, if you look at the Bible, the second coming of Christ is mentioned about 300 times, 300 good times in the New Testament alone. You know what that means? It means that for every mention of the first coming of the Lord in Scripture, it is men the, the second coming is mentioned eight times more. Do you get that? For every first coming of the Lord mentioned in Scripture, Christ's second coming is mentioned eight times times more. That means on the agenda of God. That means in the economy of the spiritual, the second coming of the Lord is the most important of all the subjects for the believer. His second coming. There are some things we need to look at here. The certainty of his coming, the critical truth about his coming, the character of of the true church at his coming. The certainty of his coming, he's gonna be certain, it's certain. He would definitely come. The first coming was prophesied and he came. The second coming has been prophesied, he will definitely come. Then we we'll look at the critical truth about his coming and uh, the character of the true church at his coming. Let's look at the certainty of his coming. John chapter 14, John chapter 14, I read verses 1 to 3. John 14, 1 to 3. Let not your heart be troubled. These are the words of Jesus Christ. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. I love that statement. I go to prepare a place for you. I don't want to miss that place, that glorious place, that place that Christ has gone to prepare for me, a place where there's no sorrow, a place where there's no pain, a place where there's no regret, a place where there's no illness, a place where there's no sickness, a place where there's no affliction, a place where there's no oppression, a place where there's no sin, a place where there's joy all throughout. I want to be there. I don't want to miss it. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, he says, I will come again. That's the second coming. I will come again. The Jesus you read in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, I will come again. The Jesus Christ that the book of Romans speaks about, I will come again. The Christ that we read in the book of Revelation, I will come again. His coming back is certain. And receive you unto myself, that where I am, ye may be also. In Acts chapter 1, Acts of the Apostles chapter 1, verses 9, 10, and 11. Acts of the Apostles chapter 1, verses 9, 10, and 11. And when he had spoken all these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? Hallelujah. This same Jesus, this same Jesus who came the first time, this same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. Hallelujah. And we all say together, come Lord Jesus. So we see here the certainty of the Lord's second coming. In Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 to 4. Colossians chapter 3, 
verses 1 to 4. Let's see what Paul says to the church at Colossae about his coming. It says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, shall appear, hallelujah, he shall appear again in the name of Jesus. He shall appear for the people of God. He shall appear for the sons and the daughters of God. He shall appear for the believer. He shall appear for the church. He shall appear for his bride. It says here, when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. So all the scripture tells us of the certainty of the coming of the Lord. Let me read on to you two or three more. 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. The epistle of John, the first epistle of John, chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. Beloved, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God, therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know when he shall appear, second coming of Christ, when he shall appear, our King, our Lord, our Master, our Messiah, when he shall appear, the one who is called in Maria, God with us, when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. In Revelation chapter 19, the certainty of Christ's second coming. Revelation chapter 19, I read from verse 11. And I saw in heaven, I saw heaven open, and behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but himself, that he was clothed, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Here again we see that indeed the Lord God in heaven will come. Point number two, the critical truth about his coming. And what is that critical truth? His coming will be sudden and many will not be ready. Many in the church will not be ready. His coming is going to be sudden. It's going to take many people unawares. And because his coming will take them unawares, many people will not be ready. In 2 Peter chapter 3, 2 Peter, many a times, if not in all cases, when the second coming of Christ is mentioned, it says his coming will be like a thief in the night. 2 Peter 3 verse 10, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. That means it will come suddenly. Many will be taken aback. Many will not be prepared. Many in the church will not have repented. Many in the church would have been backslidden, maybe compromised. They would have gone into the world, into the flesh. They would have been taken by surprise. His coming will not take you by surprise in the name of Jesus Christ. It says, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. The emphasis here is Christ's coming 
The critical truth about his coming is that his coming will be sudden and many in the house of the Lord will not be ready. I pray you will be ready. By the grace of God, you'll be ready. By the power of God, you'll be ready. By the enabling of the Lord, you will be ready when he comes in the name of Jesus Christ. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, can I read from verses 1 to 4, people of God? 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 to 4. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Do you see it one more time here? It says, his coming will be like a thief in the night, catching many people unawares, catching many people when they're not ready, catching many people in their carelessness. It says his coming will be as a thief in the night. In Luke chapter 17, Verses 26 to 30, Luke 17, 26 to 30. Oh, Christ says here, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came unawares, not prepared. The flood came like a thief in the night. And God here, Christ Jesus, is likening that to the coming of himself. He likens his second coming to when the flood came upon the people in the days of Noah. They were not ready. They were not prepared. They were not spiritually sensitive of the times. And the flood came upon them unawares. They were eating. They were drinking. They were marrying. They were giving themselves into marriage until we're told the flood came and destroyed them all. And then Christ goes further. He said, likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all because they were not ready. And Christ says, this is the critical truth about his second coming. Many will not be ready. Many will not be aware. Many will be blindsided at his coming. That's why we need to be spiritual. We need to be sensitive to his coming. In Matthew 25, verses 6 to 13. Matthew 25, verse 6. And at midnight, there was a cry made. At midnight, you don't expect a visitor. Christ once again telling us, giving us that analogy that is coming will take many unawares. Think about it. If you have a visitor that comes to your house and knocks on the door or presses the bell at 12 midnight, this is somebody you know, this is somebody that you're intimate with. This is somebody who's a good friend of yours, you're very close to. But even with all that, if this person comes, knocks on your door, presses the bell at 12 midnight, and you go to the door, the first thing you're going to ask your friend is, is everything okay? Is everything all right? Is there any problem? Why? Because you don't expect somebody at 12 midnight. Christ is telling us something here. That when the bridegroom comes, 
It will be like midnight when many will be caught unawares. That's the critical truth about Christ's second coming. It says here, and at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out, for we are not ready. The bridegroom has come suddenly, and we are not prepared. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. And the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. And he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. That means people will not be ready at his second coming. But the reason why we are going through this is because God wants you and I to be ready. And by God's grace, we will be ready in Jesus' name. Prepared in Jesus' name. <clears throat> Expectant in Jesus' name. Looking out for our Lord, our Savior, in Jesus' name. Waiting for the arrival. Looking out for the arrival. Waiting for the trumpet sound. When our Lord, our Master, shall bust the eastern sky. And when the lover of our soul will come to take us to that glorious place. What is the character of the true church at the coming of the Lord, at the Lord's second coming? Look at Luke chapter 12 from verse 35 to 40. Luke chapter 12 from verse 35 to 40. Luke 12. Scripture says here, let your loins be guarded about and your lights burning, hallelujah. This is the character of the true church at the Lord's second coming. Our light is burning, the light of righteousness, the light of holiness, the light of truth, the light of revival, the light of God's grace is shining through us. Our life hasn't been quenched. The true church has its light shining. The holy convictions that they had right from the beginning, they're holding on to. They're not compromising. They're not going the way of the world. They're not going the way of sin, of iniquity, of unrighteousness. They're not living an iniquitous life. They're not living a life of evil, of compromise. This, their light is burning. Your light will continue to burn. I said your light will continue to burn in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, let your loins be guarded about and your lights burning. And ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding. And when he cometh and knocketh, hallelujah. It says, when he cometh and knocketh, they may open to him immediately. That is the character of the true church. No skeleton in the cupboard. Nothing that they have not yet repented of. There's no sin, no iniquity, no unrighteousness that hasn't yet been washed away by the blood of the Lamb. And when the bridegroom cometh and knocketh, immediately they can open the door. Say, yes, we have been waiting. We have been living our lives according to your word. Yes, we have been waiting. Lord, look at us. We're here. We're ready to go with you. Yes, we have been waiting. That's why we have left the world and we've left sin and we've left iniquity and we've left compromise and we've left the flesh and we've left the worldliness and we have left the carnality and we've left all those things. You know why? Our choices have been different now, Lord, because when you come, we want to be ready. That's the character of the true church at the coming of the Lord. It says in verse 37, Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you, that he shall gird himself 
and make them to sit down to meet, and will come forth and serve them. And if he shall come in the second watch, or in the third watch, and find them so, blessed are those servants. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And this know, that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken. Be ye therefore ready. Come on, church. You'll be amongst those few in the name of Jesus Christ. It says, be ye therefore ready. The character of the true church at the second coming of Christ, be ye therefore ready, it says. For the Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye think not. Let's look at Mark chapter 13, verses 32 to 37. Mark chapter 13, verses 32 to 37. It says, But that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, none of the Son, but the Father. Take ye heed, true church, take ye heed, brother, sister, take ye heed, watch and pray, for ye know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work, and commanded the potter to watch. Watch ye therefore, true church. Watch ye therefore. Our life, our character, our conduct, our action, our attitude, our choices, our values, our priorities. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at even or at midnight, or at the crock crowing, or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. We're looking forward to the second coming of the Lord. But my prayer is that his second coming will not meet us unawares or unprepared in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen.